Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on this Tuesday as we take a look at what's going on for the rest of the week and into the weekend. I have to tell you, and quite honestly, I do not like the spring. As tough as the winter is to forecast, I, I, I think in so many ways the spring is a lot worse, particularly when it comes to temperatures in uh, this particular area of the Northeast, because you have a really cold ocean with water temperatures just now beginning to come off their, their seasonal lows. They're down uh, generally in the low 40s. And you have this, um, almost with regularity, you get cold backdoor cold fronts that come through and literally stall near you. And as a result, you can go 50 miles and go from 70 to 40. And it's really annoying. It's as tough as trying to forecast snow amounts, except you're forecasting temperatures, and you know you're going to bust for somebody. So uh, it just it's just a very, very frustrating pattern um, going ahead. So let's take a look at what's happening here. We'll start with the surface map, and you know there's another storm coming into the west with rain and snow from California all the way up to Washington and Oregon. In, in the east, we have this weak cold front that's moving through. There's a bit of a wave that's moving through the Carolinas with that, with some rain, and then that moves out. And here comes this cold high that drives southward. It's a pretty decent shot of cold air that comes in here to the northeast and down into the mid-Atlantic states. Um, we're going to see temperatures here on Thursday morning probably in the teens to near 20. And Wednesday and Thursday, temperatures are going to be hard-pressed to make it back to near 40. Got to remember now, the, the average high for much of this area is between 50 and 55. So, you know, to, to have a high of only 40 is 15 degrees below normal. Meanwhile, in the west, that system continues to move inland, and we have a low that comes into, into Colorado and produces some snow across Utah, Colorado, mixed with a little rain, uh, probably in the lower elevation areas, and then we've got rain up into the northern plains and into Minnesota. This high is going to pull out, and as we move into Friday the 24th, here comes another strong system into the Pacific Northwest. This Colorado storm is going to uh, move down into Texas and reach its peak intensity uh, as we move into Friday. And there will be a severe weather outbreak uh, across uh, eastern Texas uh, and on up into Oklahoma and Kansas and possibly even into Missouri. This looks like a, a pretty uh, strong, severe weather event uh, that's going to continue into Saturday morning. Now, that low weakens and starts to move northward. Now here we are. Here's the big problem for Saturday. That big high pulls out, and this is Saturday morning. So at this stage of the game, you've got another cold front that's just about getting ready to move in, okay? And that is behind it is a, a big high that's uh, coming down uh, between uh, James Bay and Lake Superior, and that produces northeast winds and cold air. And you, you can see even from the precipitation pattern, that it is, it's even generating some sleet and snow, little sleet and snow in upstate New York. Now, that front is going to get hung up uh, briefly during the day on Saturday. It's going to ease southward. And where is it? Is it going to be across central New Jersey? In which case, everybody south of there will see 70, and everybody north of here will see uh, 40s and 50s. So, you know, that's the big question where that line is. Sometimes these fronts can move further south and faster than what models indicate. And at other times, um, the uh, air mass is so shallow that the cold, the cold front kind of gets hung up. It does make it through by Saturday evening. So Saturday daytime is going to be a tough forecast. No two ways about it. And then here comes that low. It weakens as it moves up toward the eastern lakes. And at the same time, you've got this high that's kind of creating a wall. So that low is, is going to just die out and you've got the sort of snaking warm front. So this is another problem that happens in the springtime that you wind up when you get into that marine flow uh, that uh, brings in that cool ocean air, you start to get into situations where you can be cloudy and rainy for days and days. And I think that's, you know, certainly that whole thing about April showers bringing May flowers, that old, old saying, certainly applies to the Northeast because of the fact that you got this marine layer at play. And by the way, the GFS does have it cold enough for snow up in Vermont, well up into Northeastern New York and New Hampshire, and even down into Massachusetts. And I don't know how real that is, but 
uh, I, I guess for that area, it certainly should be considered, although it's, it's not going to be anything major. And as we move into early next week, you can see that first wave just kind of redevelops right off the Jersey coast and moves straight east. You still have a pretty moist marine flow going into Tuesday. And then another disturbance that comes out from the west runs up uh, toward the northern Ohio. Now, this one at this point, the high is starting to move out. So the blocking, and there's a little bit of blocking that's, that's causing this, is going to, going to break down. So that will allow that front to move uh, in a more uh, normal trajectory, which would be to the west. And then you've got this uh, warm front, cold front situation uh, developing here in the east. In the meantime, another system into the west we go, and we've got some rain and snows all up uh, through uh, the central Rockies, uh, rain uh, headed up into eastern Colorado and into Nebraska. Another system comes in to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so it's a busy pattern in some respects because you've got these weather systems moving along one after another, but no major storms. Other than that severe weather outbreak that's going to occur, there's really no major storms uh, to worry about. So we'll, we'll take a look at the upper air pattern here. And let's backtrack just a bit. And we'll start off with the initial. So here's our situation, how it looks, how it translates aloft. So you have this vortex. So you've got this cold flow. This actually has a pretty wintry look. Uh, ridge out in the western states. Uh, you've uh, you know, got that flow uh, coming in from the Pacific with weather systems. And this is the system that's coming in uh, for the, the, the latter end of the week moves inland now watch what happens in the east and this makes total sense by the way that you're going to have this ridge pop up as this vortex begins to pull out um to the northeast the ridge pops up but it's it, it doesn't fly all the way up it it, it has a, a flat look to it to some degree because the flow over us is still kind of westerly so there's that influence of the canadian part of the flow that brings down that high here's the system that now is moving down into Texas. This is going to create that severe weather outbreak uh, for uh, part Texas, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, into Missouri and Kansas, uh, and maybe even into parts of Louisiana before this is all said and done. So now we move into next week. And here's the little block that forms, okay? It, it doesn't last very long, but it's there. And you've got this blocking high. You've got this low out at 50 and 50. And here, here are those weather systems that are moving eastward and again they they kind of get shoved under the flow rather than rather than wanting to lift up and go northeastward so that's why it puts us in the marine layer here's another system coming in to the pacific west as it stays pretty busy out there eventually that block if you notice uh, we move through wednesday into thursday of next week that upper low pulls away from 50 and 50 so now you've got a little bit more of a let's call it a normalized flow across the United States. A little, little bit of chilly air coming down, coming down out of Canada, but nothing exceptionally cold as we move into the latter part of next week. I'm going to just jump back one model run so we can go a little bit further on this and see what that has to say. So here we are now. We are at um, day eight, which is March 29th. Now moving forward, um, you know, the pattern pretty much stays west to east uh, as we move along. Uh, here we have, you know, there's a lot of energy here toward the end of the period. Now, we're, we're almost to April 6th now. So, um, you know, you've got a lot of action still happening out uh, in the western states. There's a bit of a ridge uh, that tries to build up into the Gulf of Alaska. But, you know, the, the flow is, let's call it cold, cool, but certainly cool by this time, the standards of this time of year. But, the real cold air is kind of pinned up into Canada, if this is correct. Uh, so uh, we'll be below average, but it'll be um, modified Canadian air as opposed to um, uh, polar, true polar air. And again, you know, now we're getting into April now. So as far as snow is concerned, uh, especially for the uh, northeast, the southern areas of the northeast, um, the New York, New Jersey area, uh, you have to have it, New York City, New Jersey, Long Island, and so on. You have to have almost a perfect setup in order for it to happen. It's tough enough for it to happen during the winter months, but when you get into early spring, it's got to be, you know, almost perfect in the upper layers of the atmosphere. So, you know, the, how does this translate with respect to temperatures? 
going forward, well, let's look at the anomaly. Um, we're going to start here with today. So, you know, we're a little bit above normal. Here's that cold shot coming into the east. You can see it's warm in the Rockies and cold along the west coast. And that cold drives into the southwest as the uh, cold air in the east pulls out. And we get that brief, you know, that, that here's the situation. You can see how where it is above normal and where it is below normal, the boundary line is very, very close here on Saturday. And it stays close right into the first part of next week actually even goes a little bit below normal, which would reflect the fact that the wind is going to be coming in off the cold ocean. While places west and south are running well above normal, the west is below normal. And over time, you know, you get these uh, little shots of cold air behind it, but nothing exceptionally cold. Um, it just sort of looks like what it's supposed to look like when we get into the first part of the month of April. So it's a pretty um typical i guess that's the way to best describe it it's a typical late march early april pattern that's evolving across the united states uh, in which case um, it could be annoying for a number of days if we wind up sitting in low clouds and rain and drizzle in some areas uh, the west looks like uh, they will uh, get some more uh, uh, rain and snow from that and of course we have the potential for those severe the severe weather outbreak uh, at the end of this week uh, across parts of the uh, lower Mississippi Valley uh, and even into the middle Mississippi Valley. So we'll be paying attention to that. All right, so everybody have a great day. Uh, website posts on meteorologistjoechoffee.com. You can take a look at that. Just click on the card above. Uh, also, we have Angry Ben, and he has his own uh, opinions on this backdoor front coming down into the eastern states and whether um, who's going to see 70 and who isn't. And uh, that's on nycweathernow.com. And you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast. They're just 99 cents for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. You get specific forecasts for those areas and uh, latest satellites, radars, and a lot of other things. And you don't get uh, computer-generated forecasts. You get my own opinions on it. And, uh, of course, thank you for watching my YouTube video. If you're new, welcome to my YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube page. It's absolutely free, and you'll get notifications uh, anytime a new, a new video is created. So have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.